welcome to academic game tutorials in this video we will discuss in details about flow pattern of materials along with the factors governing flow pattern and all the major types of material flow pattern before starting if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet just click on subscribe and press the bell icon here we come up with new videos on different subjects to make the academic studies easier for you so into the topic flow pattern of materials flow pattern means the system to be adopted or the system used for the movement of raw materials from the beginning and up to the end of manufacturing the overall objective of the flow pattern is to plan for the economical movement of the raw materials throughout the plant the flow pattern affects the materials handling cost the amount of work in process the capital and space tied up by work in process the length of total production time the rate of the performance and coordination of operations the amount of physical and mental strain on the operators and the supervision and control mechanisms quite often a plant layout design starts with the flow system around which services and other facilities are added and building design are modified accordingly but sometimes the flow must be adopted to suit existing buildings factors governing flow pattern are the external transport facilities the number of products to be handled the number of operations on each product the number of units to be processed the number of sub assemblies made up ahead of assembly line the size and shape of available land and the necessary flow between work areas types of flow pattern the flow patterns can be classified into horizontal and vertical the horizontal flow system is adopted on a shop floor while vertical flow is adopted when material has to move in a multi-story building at first let's discuss about horizontal flow lines or horizontal flow patterns there are five basic types of horizontal flow line number one i flow or line flow or straight line flow number two l flow number three u flow number four s flow or serpentine flow or inverted s flow and number five o flow let's start from number one i flow or line flow which is also known as straight line flow it is the simplest form of flow in this materials are fed at one end and components leave the line at the other end this type is economical in space and convenient in i-shaped buildings I flow is preferred for building automobile industries. This figure demonstrates a I flow or line flow, which is also known as straight line flow pattern of materials. Number 2. L flow. It is similar to the I flow and is used where I line cannot be accommodated in the available space. We can see L flow in this figure. Number 3. U flow. In this, both feeding and output take place at the same end. That is, it allows both receiving and dispatching of goods to be done on one side. In comparison to I or L flow, this method is easier for supervision. This type of flow can be adopted in the manufacture of electric motor industry etc. We can see U flow in this figure. Number 4. S flow. This material flow pattern is also known as, serpentine flow or inverted S flow. If the production line is so long that zigzagging on the plant floor is necessary, then S flow is adopted. This type provides efficient utilization of space and is compact enough to allow effective supervision. Both of these two figures represent S flow, or serpentine flow or inverted S flow. Number 5. O flow. This type of material flow pattern is used where processes or operations are performed on a rotary table or a rotary handling system. The components are moved from one working station to the other, and when they leave the O-line, a complete set of processes or operations have been performed. The components are inspected, before they are moved onto a second line for an additional series of processes or operations or to an assembly line. O-flow can be adopted by industries manufacturing electric bulbs. This figure demonstrates O-flow. These above mentioned basic flow lines are mostly used by industries in various combinations. 
Examples of combinations of basic horizontal flow systems are shown in this figure below. Here, in this flow system, we can see a combination of I plus U flow or L plus L flow. In this flow system, we can see a combination of S plus L flow. In this flow system, we can see a combination of S plus L flow. And, in this flow system, we can see a combination of O plus U flow patterns. Unidirectional and retractional flow. The flow is said to be unidirectional when the material is passed from one workstation to another without having to pass along the same path. In this figure we can see an unidirectional flow. The flow methods that we have explained here in horizontal flow patterns are all unidirectional type of flow. On the other hand, in the retractional flow, the flow is repeated, that is, two or more non-consecutive operations are performed on the same machine. The aspect of flow is decided by consideration of machine utilization. In this flow, the available machine time is fully utilized but schedules have to allow for repeated machine setting, and for the fact that intermittent localized halts or stops occur in the production line, that is, each time a machine is switched over from one operation setting to another. This flow is also known as repeated flow, as we can see in this figure. Now, that we have discussed about the horizontal flow lines or horizontal flow patterns in details. Let's focus on the vertical flow lines or vertical flow pattern of materials now. As we already discussed, the vertical type of flow is for multi-story buildings. In order to have the materials handling systems and control mechanisms to operate effectively, following six basic aspects of vertical flow systems are in use. Number 1. Processing downward or upward. Number 2. Centralized or decentralized elevation. Number 3. Unidirectional or retractional flow. Number 4. Vertical or inclined flow. Number 5. Single or multi flow. Number 6. Flow between buildings. Let's start with number 1. Processing downward or upward. In downward processing, the materials are fed from the top floor, and the finished product is received at the bottom floor and in upward processing the materials are fed from the bottom floor, while the finished product is received at the top floor as we can see in these two figures. In processing downward much gravity handling systems such as roller lines, chutes, pipes, buckets, hand operated lifts etc can be used. These are economical in installation, operation, maintenance etc. Number 2. Centralized or decentralized elevation. In a centralized elevation all the material handling devices are installed at one central place of the building. Therefore, this system is economical in supervision and maintenance. It sometimes reduces installation cost also. This method is usually employed when the flow on each floor is a U-flow. A decentralized elevation method is more costly in installation, maintenance and space, but by this method handling on each floor can be greatly reduced and more flexibility in design of the flow lines is possible. Number 3. Unidirectional or Retractional Flow We have discussed unidirectional and retractional flow just a few slides before this. All the horizontal flow patterns discussed earlier are examples of unidirectional flow, which is a one-way pattern. But, in retractional type of flow, material which had already passed previously, has to come back on the floor. This is done purposely to achieve better utilization of available space and machines. We can see, unidirectional or retractional flow for vertical flow lines, in these figures for a multi-story factory facility. Number 4. Vertical or inclined flow. This type of flow is more economical and carried on with material handling devices, such as elevators, chutes, buckets etc. as we can see in these figures. In addition, inclined flow may also be carried out by conveyor belts as used in coal handling plants and chain system to move boiler grates etc. and similar other tasks. Number 5. Single or multi-flow. In a single flow, there is only one flow line of materials. While in multi-flow, there will be several flow lines and all these feed one assembly line. In these two figures we can see both single and multiple flows. Number 6. 
flow between buildings. When one production line is executed in several adjacent buildings, the flow of goods may be achieved, either on an elevated floor, or a ground floor. Ground floor is cheaper but requires more handling than an elevated floor. Elevated flow frees the ground for traffic and storage purposes. We can see material flow between building using both ground floor and elevated flow in these two figures. So, we have discussed in details about flow pattern of materials, along with the factors governing flow pattern, and all the major types of material flow pattern, which included the different types of horizontal and vertical flow pattern of materials in the factory facility. Thank you.